Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live session with Swoosh English and official OET. My name's Scott, the academic director at Swoosh English, and it's very nice to see everyone today and uh, looking forward to having this official OET class with Swoosh English today on OET reading part A. So welcome to the class, everyone. Thanks a lot for coming. Can I just confirm that everyone can hear me? And that everyone can also see me as well before we get started with the class. Um, everything's good in my end, but of course I like to do a tech check and make sure everything is also working on your end as well so that we can get along with this class and everything is going nice and smoothly throughout. So just throw into the comments, guys, the chat box. You're going to be using this a lot today in this class. Um, just throw in a comment to confirm that you can hear me and that you can see me as well. Thank you very much. Yep, okay, we've got a few students on one of the streams today is saying, yep, that they can hear me and that they can also see me as well. That's fantastic, great. So let's see who we have in today's live class. You know me, I like to get to know the students who are in. I like to talk to you, I like to engage with you, I like to have a conversation with you. So we have today on one of the streams, we have Nom Pumalelo, welcome to the session. We have Carla. We have uh, Sant Anna Lakshmi, I think I said that right. We have Rija, we have Romy, we have Mia, we have Kay Mose, we have Sherry Rose. And over on the other stream on official OET, we've got a lot of people in today. We have Lizzie, we have Rabin, we have Jeepin, we have Rob, we have Sika, we have Sinhula, we have Dana, we have Munita, Aileen, we have Om, Ruby, Lucy, Anna, Siju <laughs> Sudan, I think I said that right. Samana, Bakhar, Mohammed, we have Mumtaz, Tanaka, Nehru, Sherry May, we have Nasama, we have Jipin, we have Junu, we have Jenny, and we have Divya, Adrian, and Marin as well, as well as a good few people, of course, who are in this session today. So welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your busy work and study schedules to come along to this class today. You're all welcome to this session. So before we actually begin with the class, I've got a few more questions for everyone in today's session. The first question I have, of course, is um, where are you from? And the second question is, when are you taking your OET exam? Quickly, before we begin the class, I just want to know what your, not, I know what your name is, where you are from and when you are taking your OET exam. So please put the answers to those questions into the comment box, please. Just very, very good to know so I can get to build some rapport with everyone in the session today, understand your needs and requirements and based on you know, when you're taking the OET exam, et cetera, as well. It's very good uh, for me to know. So throw the comments in and I'll try and see who we have in the session today for that. Okay, so Siseko is from North Cyprus. Fantastic. We have Anaste from London. We have Jinu from Bahrain. It's taking the exam on the 24th. Jinu, is that the 24th of April or the 24th of May? Let me know, please. We have Gressi from the Philippines taking the exam in August this year. We have Niru from Singapore. We have Anjana from India. Very good. Adrian from Mabohe in the Philippines. Nasama from Zambia taking the exam on the 26th of June. Fantastic. Melody from Lesotho. We have Nima, Nima sorry, India taking the exam 29th of May 2021. We have Jipin from Mumbai, India on May the 9th taking the exam. Anu from Kerala in India, taking the exam the 24th. Let's go through a couple more, okay? We have Carla from the Philippines, taking the exam on the 9th of May. And we have Luciana from Brazil, doesn't yet know when she's taking the exam. Last one, Mohammed from Egypt, taking the exam uh, in Oman very soon. So a good number of people are taking the exam this month or next, some later in the year. And of course, some are yet to decide as well. Best advice I have for everyone is don't rush your OET exam date. You really want to go into your OET exam knowing that you've done everything in advance for the exam, you've prepared for it adequately, you've probably been assessed and tested adequately, and you know you've got a really high chance of getting that score that you need in advance. So if you're not yet ready for the OET exam, relax, wait until later, until you are ready and you have been assessed with the with the premium preparation provider 
um, program that you're hopefully going through. Okay, now, okay, let me see who we got over on the other stream. We've got a few people in the Swoosh English stream today. Irene London taking the exam 29th of May, Rija June 26th in Saudi Arabia. We have Nompolemo is from the UK living in Guernsey, planning to take the exam in June. And we have um, uh, Bella Sonny from India taking the exam next week. RJ from the Philippines, June 2021. And Sherry Rose from the Philippines taking the exam the 9th of May. Okay, guys, thank you very much for allowing me to introduce yourselves to me and for coming along today and to talk all about that. That's fantastic. Once again, that advice is don't rush your OET exam. Wait until you're ready and you have been assessed to be ready to give yourself the best chance to pass the exam the first time you take it or the next time if you've taken it, if you've taken it already. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for the introduction. So let's get stuck into today's class. So as we know, we're doing a class today on OET reading a guide to part A. So what exactly will we cover in the lesson today? Well, first of all, we're gonna do a small mini quiz on reading part A, it's just to test your knowledge to see if you're a complete newbie to OBT reading, or maybe you, of course, are a veteran, you've been studying for a long time, just want to know you exactly, just want to make sure you know exactly what the exam is when you go into it, either this month or next, or later in the year, or maybe even next year. We're gonna analyze and practice methods to assist you in scoring higher. And we're going to, of course, do some more practice, a bit of evaluation at the very end. So a nice jam-packed lesson with lots of great information and tips on OET reading part A. Of course, um, I just want to let everyone know at the start of the class now as well that some of the information you're going to get today will be very, very useful. But if you're looking for more information on all parts of your OET exam, the tips, the tricks, the methods, and the strategy, and the mindset you need to pass your OET exam, the first time, then make sure you come along and join our free OET masterclass. It's a four part video series presented by myself and uh, a co teacher at Swish English, and you'll get access to a free OET writing guide as well. All completely free. Get signed up today, guys, to our free OET masterclass. The sign up link is in the comments in the YouTube or Facebook feed that you are watching on. Okay, so here we go, guys. I got a quiz for everyone. First question, second question, third question, fourth question, fifth question, sixth question. How long is the reading part A, ex part of the exam? How many texts do you have to read? How many question extracts are there? How many topics? How many marks are there? And what type of questions or tasks do you have to complete on the day of the exam? So let's look at question number one, guys. How long is reading part A? Who can tell me how long? the exam is throw your comments guys into the chat box i want to know how well you know this exam please please let me know guys uh, everyone in the comments okay i'll just wait for a few comments to come through and we will see it in a minute looking forward to seeing it your answers to this 15 minutes everyone's saying fantastic okay i'm not going to say if that's right but a few answers coming through yep 15 minutes. Okay, question two. How many texts do you have to read? So how many texts will you have to read for reading part A? Give me a number, guys. So is there one text? Is it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Hopefully not that many, but um, how many texts do you have to compare and extract the information for in the, in the reading exam? People are saying four texts, four texts, four texts. Okay. How many question extracts are there? So that's the question is, how many different sets of questions are there in OET reading par day? As you know, the questions are divided into certain sections. But how many question sections are there? Would be probably a better way to put that. Tell me in the answers, guys. Some people are saying four. Chestnut said four. Okay. Um, some people are saying the amount of questions. We'll get to that question in a minute. Some people are saying four texts, okay? Some are saying two, some are saying three. Okay, okay, let's lock those in. Question four, how many, uh, sorry, we'll go on to actually the next question, sorry. How many marks are there? How many marks are there in the OET uh, reading part A exam? Okay, some people have sent in a couple of answers already, which looks like the correct amount. But how many marks are there for OET? reading part A, send them in. Some people are saying 20, some are saying 21, and some are saying 24. Okay, last question. 
what type of tasks do you have to complete? So what are the question tasks that you have to do, okay? Think about what you have to do in reading part A in the three sections. Of course, you're going to have to tell me the type of task you have to do. Write that out in the comments, please, guys. That's a brief introduction to the OET quiz, uh, reading part A. Send your comments in and we'll see, okay? All right, some people are still sending in the marks questions. Fantastic, all good. So Nompolelu said sentence completion. Mela has said fill in the blanks. Okay, have we got any more, guys? Those are looking good, though. Those are looking good. But do we have any more types of questions coming through? Matching. Okay, let's answer. Let's see what the answers to these questions are, guys. Nice. We all seem to know our reading part A very well, and that's very important for your overall knowledge understanding of the task and therefore you can complete it very well as well okay let's move on to the next slide so well done guys reading part a is 15 minutes in length there are four different types of texts that you have to read there will be a b c and d there are three different types of question extracts. So the questions, the, the marks that you have, 20, as you can see, there are 20 marks in total. They are divided between three different types of questions, of the question extracts, as I say. There's only one topic you'll have to discuss as part of OET reading part A. So all of the four readings and all of the question types will relate around one topic. There are 20 marks in total. And we've kind of got it right as well with our type of task. There is a text matching or heading matching exercise, a short answer exercise, and a note fill, gap fill, or fill in the blanks exercise as well. Nice. We know our topics very, very well. Good, good. And of course, if you're new to OET reading uh, part A, then that's going to be a good guide for you to ensure you know the, the, the format of the questions very well. Okay, let's get into what I call to be one of the most important uh, exercises that you can do in planning for your OET reading part A, and that's the heading and subheading skimming. It is the first thing that you should do when you open up your question paper or OET reading part A. So before you read any of the questions, you should skim the headings and the subheadings of the text so you have an idea of where to find the answer. This is essential because it gives you a great understanding of the gist of what each text is talking about. And then that can save you so much time later on when you're trying to extract the answers because you don't wanna be spending so much time reading each text going, oh, I don't know what the answer is. Is it A, is it B, is it C or D? If you can get a gist of what each text is about by skimming the headings and the subheadings, then that will save you time in locating the right answer based on the keywords of the question. So you should do this every single time. Skim the headings and the subheadings. Let's practice this now, guys. Here is text A of our sample reading part A exercise today. So have a look at this text. Take a note of the headings and the subheadings. Obviously, a piece of paper or a pen or something to write on will be very, very useful for you right now. But take a note of the headings and the subheadings to give you a good understanding about what the text is about. I'll give everyone a few seconds to do that. Okay, guys, let's look at text extract B. Same thing, everyone. Take a note of the headings and the subheadings to give you a gist of the information. Thanks everyone. Text extract C. Same thing. Take a note of the headings and the subheadings. Give you a gist of the information.
And finally, text extract D. Last one, guys. Take a note of the headings, the subheadings, and the essential information. Awesome work, everyone. So I really wanted to keep that nice and quick and give you only a really about, I guess, 20 or so seconds, 20, 30 seconds, absolute maximum to skim through those texts, get an idea about what each text is about, so then you can move on to answering the questions. But this is really, really, really useful for saving you time and I guess focusing in your, your focus on the correct text each time you're going to answer the question. So you've taken a note of the headings and the subheadings. Let's see where we can go with that, guys. So hopefully you've got something like what I have down here. So here are the text, here are the headlines and subheadings of all texts. Um, I guess what the question I'm going to have for everyone is what information do you expect to find under each subheading? So we have uh, text A, we have fractures, we have dislocation, we have sprain. What do we think we mean? That's going to information we're going to get from that text itself. Text B, we have simple fracture of limbs, immediate management clinical assessment, and then management as well. Text C, drug therapy protocol. And then text D, we have the unique technique, sorry, for plaster back slab for arm fractures, they use the same principle for leg fractures. So based on that, what do we think text A is about? I can see it looks like different types of injuries that are related to fractures, dislocation, and sprain, different kinds of bone injuries. Text B seems to be obviously how we can assess and manage the simple fracture of limbs. Text C is obviously the drug therapy protocol. So what drugs to give under the certain circumstances that we're talking about. And then text D is a specific technique about plaster black slab for arm fractures. Okay, so they all follow the same the one uniform topic, and that seems to be fractures. That's the topic of this reading part A task. But as we can see, each text focuses on a different section. So you should be doing that at the very, very beginning, skimming your headings, skimming your hub head, subheadings, getting an idea about what each text is about. So you can focus in your attention based on the, the, um, the, the question types that you have later. Now let's see what question types we have for reading part A. So we're now gonna do a text matching predict the answer style activity. The task is to analyze the part A text matching task below and predict what the answer could be based on your skimming of your headings. So everyone hopefully will have their own information taken down, something like this. You'll have your text and you'll have your headings. Please take a quick picture or a screenshot of these. If you haven't already, we're going to use these for the next exercise, guys. So I'll leave this up for a few seconds, take a picture or a screenshot of the headings that we have in this exercise here. Now, if you haven't taken down notes already, as we will need these for the next exercise. So I'll leave this up for a few seconds, guys. Please tell me, um, please say done in the chat box or yes, I've done that when you have confirmed that for me, please. Thank you. Picture or a screenshot, guys, of this. We need it for the next activity. Thank you very much, guys. Let's progress on now with the next activity that I had outlined. So as I said, the activity is analyzing the part A text matching task and predicting what the answer could be based on your skimming of your headings. This is a prediction exercise. You're not gonna see the text and the content of the text, but you're gonna try and predict based on the headings what the answer might be. So have a quick read through all of the questions, guys. It says for each question one to seven, decide on which text the information comes from, we're not doing that. We are predicting the information. So I'm going to give everyone a bit of a moment here. 
just to read through. Simply put your text um, A, B, C, or D based on the headings, what you think the answer might be as a prediction. I'll give everyone a, you know, 30 seconds to a minute to complete this, and then we'll analyze your predictions afterwards. Good luck. All right, everyone, let's see together now um, what you thought your prediction was. And I want to see your reasons for it as well, based on your reading and information that you have down together. So let's have a look through them together, guys. Number one, procedures for delivering pain relief. What do we think the answer to that one is? Do we think one, do we think A, B, C, or D? I think the answer was based on that. If we go back, of course, to our headings, a, B, C, or D. So have a look at those again and move forward. But procedures for delivering pain relief. We've got a number of answers. Ariana said B for one. Faith has said C. Charlene has said C. And Shutita has also said C. Interesting. Okay. Let's have a look over on the other section. Okay. We think C for number one. A good number of people are thinking C for number one. Fantastic. Okay. Now, let's look at number two, the procedure to follow when splinting a fractured limb. Let's see, Faith has said D, Kim Lay has said D as well, okay. Number two, I'm just trying to follow everyone here, D for Jipin as well, Anu has said B, um, Ania said B as well, okay, okay. Bit of a mixed bag that one, but we'll see very, very soon. Let's look now at number three. What to record when assessing a patient? What to record when assessing a patient for number three? What do we think the answer for that one might be? Someone here. No one's quite got to that one yet on this feed. I'll come back in a minute. Okay. We think um, B for that one. Good number of people are saying B for this one. Fantastic. 3B. Yep. B, B, B. Okay. We've got a consensus there. Number four. The terms used to describe different types of fractures. Which text do we think might match that based on our reading of the text? Okay, let's see what we have over here. Ania said A, okay. Um, a good number of people have said A here for number four. Yep, Dafi, Dafi Shisha. <laughs> Dafi Shisha, I think that's right. Have I got that wrong? I'm very sorry, my friend. Said A as well. Sarah has said A. Yep, it'd be good if you numbered your uh, responses, guys. That way I can follow it. Okay, good, good. Five, the practitioners who administer analgesia. What do we think is that one? Number five. Okay, just waiting for people to come through with this one for number five. Okay, let's see who's answered that one. We think A. Some people are saying B for that one. Some sleep healers are saying A. Okay, a bit of a mixed bag for that one. Six, what to look for when checking an injury. What do we think the answer is to that one? Okay, what do we think it is? C for that one. No, oh, that's five. Sorry, I haven't quite seen six yet. Um, I'll wait for a few sixes to come through. Okay. But for number five, we're all saying C. Faith has said B for that one. What to check for when checking an injury. Okay, B. Yep, a good few people now are saying B for this one as well. Last one, number seven, how fractures can be caused. How they can be caused. What do you think the answer is to number seven for that? Okay. 
Okay. Waiting for a few number sevens to come through. A few answer number sixes are coming through still too, which is great, guys. Thank you. Faith has said A for seven. Okay. Genu has said B for seven. Daffy Shisha said seven A. Diana says seven A. And Lavenda has also said seven A as well. Okay, guys. Fantastic. So you've all practiced your ability to predict there. You've read the headings. Based on the information in the headings and the text title alone, you've tried to correlate the answer, the potential answer, by focusing in on the keywording in the text and the keywording in the answers. Let's see now if any of your predictions were correct. So now we're going to complete the activity. We're going to do this text matching activity. You're going to have approximately three minutes. I'm going to make it a bit less than you would in the actual OET exam because you had extra time to predict there and read. They give everyone about three minutes to complete the activity. Okay, so here we have, guys, the questions once again. Can we take a, because obviously we're online today, can we take a picture or a photograph of the questions once again, please? Because the next slide I'm going to show will be the four uh, the four text options. I can't show both at the same time, plus the screen is only so big, right? So you might not be able to see, especially if you're looking on a phone or a tablet. So can everyone please just screenshot this text here? I'll make it bigger for everyone, sorry. There we go. Screenshot this picture or take a picture of the questions, please. When you've done that, please um, type in done or yes, so I've conf everyone's confirmed and I can move on to the next section, but you will need to have this when moving on to the next part of the class and that is the text type. So I'll give everyone a few seconds to screenshot that or take a picture before we move on to the next activity. Few more seconds, guys. Thanks to everyone who is screenshotting and taking pictures. Thank you very much. Just give everyone a few more seconds to make sure everyone has done it. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very, very much. Let's move on now to the actual activity. So you have taken a picture and a screenshot of the questions. Now you're going to actually have a look at the slide with the answer options. You're going to complete this activity now by answering A, B, C, or D to the text, which you can find the information about. So here we go. Here are the texts. Okay, good luck, everyone. I'll come back in a few minutes. Good luck with answering the questions.
Another few seconds, guys. Another few seconds, and then we'll get into the analysis. Okay, guys, we're going to stop there because I've got other parts of the class to move forward to, but it gives you an indication about how little time that you might actually have in OET reading part A. So you do have to be quick with these exercises. So let's just see how everyone got on. I hope you enjoyed that activity and you found the previous activity to be useful in helping you get your answers much, much quicker. Okay, so let's go through the answers, guys. One was C. Two was D. Three was B. Four was A. Five was C. Six was B. And seven was A. Very good. Okay, guys. Now I can see a few people like Faith has got all of those correct. Nice work, Faith. Well done. Now, well done to everyone for taking part in the activity. As we can see, we did a great job of predicting the titles of the text and looking at the keywords in the question. This information often will correlate. We have an idea about the title and the gist of the text, and then we'll take that information and look at it with the question types as well. So how did you get on, guys? How many did you get correct? Send me a comment in into the comment box. How many of these did you get right? Let me know, please, everyone. So. I also have a question for everyone. We did the prediction exercise. Were any of your initial predictions correct? Were they predict correct by simply scanning through the question, uh, sorry, the headings and the subheadings, looking at that information, and then using that for the answer options? Were any of your initial predictions correct? Let me know, guys. Well done. Awesome. Another person got all correct as well. Nice work, guys. Very good. Good scores, everyone. Nice. We've got most people are getting six or above out of seven. Great work, everyone. Fantastic. So we did a very good job there overall. I know it wasn't quite like the official OET exam paper, but what we just did there was we did a very good job of doing this time-saving activity, and that is our predictions. We skim through all the information in the text to begin in reading part A. We extract that information. We get a knowledge of what the gist of each is about, and then we can correlate the keywords in the question types with the meaning in the headings. And then we know which text to go to straight away. And that'll save us time with skimming and scanning through that information. If we get good at this, then we'll make part A a breeze in terms of your time management and your technique, guys. So hope you find that useful. And as I can see, most of you did a really good job of getting your correct, uh, predicting the text via your answers. Awesome, guys. Good work. Okay, let's move on to the next activity. So we're gonna move on now to a gap fill style exercise. As we know, we usually have three different types of activities in OET reading part A. We just did the text or heading matching activity. Now we're gonna go on to the gap fill or fill in the blanks activity. So we're gonna do something slightly similar. You got your knowledge of the headings from the previous activity. We're gonna use this knowledge now moving forward into the other activities for OET reading part A. So the task says, analyze the gap fill part A task below and predict what the answer could be. We're going to do a different kind of prediction exercise now, this time taking knowledge of your use of English and your grammar. Can you also analyze what type of word or words or numbers could fill in the gap? So here we have it, guys. Here is the activity here. So we've actually moved forward from uh, questions 15 and 20 now. I know I'm doing this in a slightly different order but I'll, still, I'll tell you why very, very soon. So as we can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different questions, and there is a gap in the middle. It says to complete each of the sentences with a word or short phrase from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both. But what we're actually doing here, guys, is we're not actually answering the question yet. I want you to analyze the question, look at 15 together, guys. So it says, falling on an outstretched hand is a typical cause of a what of the elbow. So we're looking at what kind of word 
might be missing in this gap based on the word that comes before, a, article, and the word that comes after, of, a preposition. So what kind of word do we think might be missing here in this gap? Think about your word types or even your phrases as well, your nouns, your verbs, your adjectives, adverbs, other filling devices, etc. as well. And also, can you tell me exactly what kind of word it might be, the type of topic word it might be based on that? So have a look, guys, at number 15 and, and send in your answers to me, please. What kind of word do we think might be missing here in number 15? OK, throw your answers in, guys, and then we'll move on. But I want to see how we're doing in this activity so far. OK. OK, just waiting for some answers to come in. Take your time, guys, though. It's no rush. But what kind of word is missing here? Noun, verb, adjective, etc. OK, please, if you took a picture of the text, please don't read them yet. By the way, we're not doing the actual reading yet. We're, we're doing a, a prediction style exercise. Don't throw in the answer, guys, as well. Please don't go, throw in any answers. Throw any word type, please. Please throw in a word type at this point. This is the, the point of this activity, is to use our knowledge of English and grammar and sentence structure to guess what the answer might be. So Ray Hannah said a noun, okay? Okay, guys, I still see a good number of answers coming in. If you know the answer, hold it to yourself. We'll do that very, very soon, but we're practicing our use of English here. Noun, as some people have said as well, a noun, a noun, a noun, but what kind of noun do we think is missing as well? Keep them coming through. Okay, guys, we got a gist of what this exercise is. I'm gonna give everyone a minute or so to read through questions 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I want you to do the exact same. Don't say the answer. Keep the answer to yourself at the minute if you think you know what it is. But write, take a note of what you think the kind of word might be, but keep the answers to yourself. I'll give everyone about 30 seconds to a minute to go through that, and then we'll analyze the answers afterwards. Okay, guys, nice work on that prediction exercise. Now let's just brainstorm together as we go through this activity what we think those answer options potentially were with the type of word that we were doing in this activity overall. So guys, let's have a look now. So we got a good number of people have already identified 15. Faith has said a noun, and she's also given a bit more information by saying a type of fracture. That's exactly what the answer to that one was. It was a noun type of fracture, aka what happened to the elbow? A bit more information about that. So what do we think number 16 might be? Upper limb fracture should be elevated by the means of a what? We have an article that comes before that. What type of word typically follows an article? Throw your answers in, guys, for number 16, the kind of word that you think it might be. Psych has said a noun for number 16. Good, good. Give more information to guys about what kind of noun you think it might be. Maybe give a bit more of a clue to the, the kind of word it might be for some more accuracy. But not everyone here is saying 16. That's great. But keep that information coming in too, guys. 
Fantastic. It's a noun, it's a noun, it's a noun, it's a noun. Good, good, good. But more information, the better. Let's see what I've analyzed from this, okay? A noun, but what's it elevated by? So that might give you a clue in terms of you have your hand in something when it's being elevated. What's it being elevated by? 17. Make sure the patient isn't wearing any what on the part of the body where the plaster back slab is going to be placed. So what do we think the answer to that one might be as well? Any something isn't wearing any what. It's a kind of noun. Yep, that's right, everyone. It is a kind of noun. But any more information to the type of thing that you're doing, keyword is wearing. So what kind of noun would we, would we be looking for overall? My prediction on that is, of course, it's a clothing or an adornment, something that they're wearing. So you can focus in your information based on that, based on this keyword here of wearing. 18, check to see whether swollen limbs are what or increasing in size. So number 18, what do we think the answer for that might be? What kind of word do we think it might be? So someone said adjective for number 18, okay? Um, someone said a noun for 18. Someone said a noun as well. Keep the answers coming in. Anu has said an adjective as well. Okay. So, okay. So a number of people are saying adjective here. However, the answer is not adjective. It's verb plus ing. I must have unveiled that a bit early. And the reason R for that is it could be an adjective, but look closer. We have R. So R obviously is our auxiliary verb. We have verbing because then we have another ing verb here. So these are being joined on together. So something is verbing or increasing in size. So the key word here is verbing because we have a second verb plus ing here. So keep an eye out for that. 19. In a plaster black plaster black <laughs> back slab, I'll try and say it again guys, there is a layer of what closest to the skin. What kind of word do we think is missing for number 19 guys? Keep the answers coming in. What kind of word is missing for number 19? Okay. Okay. Adjective, some people are saying again. Okay, noun, people are saying. Okay. Okay. Good. So, in a passage, there is a layer of something. So, a layer of something. Okay, we have our phrase here. There is a layer. We have a pronoun, auxiliary verb. We have a plus noun, of plus something closest to the skin. Okay. So this one here is actually um, a noun again, but it's a medical adornment if you want to be more precise in this matter. A medical adornment we're looking at there. Okay. Then the last one, what do you think the last one is? Patients aged. Key word here is, the key word here is aged. What do you think the answer might be? Uh, based on that for this one, okay? So it's a kind of noun, right? But we give any more information, the kind of noun we're looking for, keep them coming. This is really analyzing and assessing your use of English, guys. I know it might be different to what some people are doing. This is really, really important for your OET reading and your OET listening and your OET speaking and your OET writing. It's your use of English to improve your grammar. So Anu has said an adjective for number 20, okay? So Shita has said a number. Yes, we're looking at a number. And in particular, we're looking at a age to be more precise. So patients aged something. So you might have a number, but you might also have a unit of measurement that's related to age. So pay, please pay attention to that. So as we can see, what we've done here, guys, we've analyzed the gaps. We looked at the words that come around it. We've also taken into context what the sentence and answer option might be. So based on that, we can really, really focus in on the kind of word we might be needing. And we can combine that with earlier on the text matching exercise to really focus in our attention and to save ourselves time to hopefully improve our accuracy. Okay, nice work, guys. So don't forget your headings. Of course, you might have, you should have all this information already, but this will be very useful for this exercise again and for the following exercises. So it'll help you once again by looking at the answer options, looking at the gaps, look at the kind of wording that's being used in the answer options. You can go, to go oh yeah, that one's talking about drugs. Okay. Mm, that one's talking about fractures. This one's talking about dislocation. This one's talking about what to do for a back slab. All right, I've taken that information down. I've taken a note of that earlier on in my heading matching. Now I can still know which text to go to quicker 
and it will save me time as well. So this is for saving you time, of course, and going to the right text by knowing the headings. And then with the an analysis of the use of English in the gaps, it can help you locate the kind of word that you need within that text much, much quicker. So don't forget those in going into this next activity. Okay, now we're gonna complete the activity, guys. So we're gonna do this activity. Once again, everyone, please take a screenshot or a picture of the, uh, the text itself. I've kept in um, the predictions that we've had earlier on. You can take a note of those and use this for the exercise. But once again, we're taking a picture or a screenshot of the questions. So you can use these moving forward into the next activity. So I'll just leave this up again, guys, for a few seconds. Once you've taken the picture or a screenshot, please send in done or yes into the chat box, into the, the forums and Facebook and YouTube, and we can do that moving forward, guys, okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Let's now move into the next activity that we're gonna do. So you have your questions. Now I'm gonna show you the text on the screen and we're gonna complete this activity. Let's see if any of your, of your predictions and corrections were right. Here are the text, guys. I'm gonna get everyone about two, three minutes to see if you can answer the questions. Here are the text options once again. Let's see how you get on everybody. Good luck and I'll speak to you all in a few minutes. Another uh, 30 seconds to a minute, guys, and then we'll analyze the answers.
All right, everyone, there we go. Let's see how everyone got on, but I hope you used your use of English and association with the grammar and the sentence structure activity, plus the previous text heading and subheading association activity to give yourself an accurate score with this task. So let's have a look now at the answers. So what do we get for number 15, guys? Faith has said dislocation for number 15. Everyone else, guys, throw your answers in. What do we think number 15 the answer is? We'll go through a few of these now, guys. Number 15. What do we think the answer is? Throw in your answers, please. Looking forward to seeing them and to hear them. Okay. Awesome. Yep. We've got dislocation, Kajal, and our and nurse over in the YouTube feed as well is saying this. Keep them coming in. Dislocation, dislocation, dislocation. Well done. Dislocation is the correct answer. Nice work, everyone. What about number 16? Upper limb fracture should be elevated by means of a what? Faith on our Facebook feed over here on Swoosh English has said sling. Okay. Anyone else? Make sure, of course, you number your answers too, guys. Make sure you number your answers. So you say 15, 16, 17, so I know which one you're associating with. Okay, Anu, nice, Suja uh, have also said sling as well. Very good. So Chita has said sling. Nonpolelo has said sling. Well done, guys. The correct answer is a sling. So it's a noun and a type of thing to hold your arm up as well. Very, very good. Bonus marks if you can tell me which text it was located in as well. 17, make sure the patient isn't wearing any what on the part of the body where the plaster back slab is going to be placed. What do we think number 17 was? Throw in your answers, guys, to number 17. Um, jewelry said nice. Anu also said jewelry as well. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Good, good. Jewelry, jewelry. Janice has also said jewelry too. Sachita has said jewelry. Fantastic, guys. All right. Well done. The answer is jewelry. It was a noun. It was something you wear or an adornment as well. Number 18, check to see whether the swollen limbs are what or increasing in size. So we earlier on, we said that one should be verb plus ing. What do we think the answer to that one is? Did you find a relevant verb plus ing for an answer for this? Okay, so what do we think, guys? Suja has said 18, throbbing. Okay, throbbing. Anu has said throbbing as well. Nice has said throbbing, and Jessa has said throbbing. Janice has said throbbing. So I think we've got a consensus here, guys. Uh, N-E-S-2-R, throbbing with a question mark. <laughs> Fantastic. And non Pumelo has also said throbbing. Dun, dun, dun. The correct answer is, everyone... Throbbing, nice work. So verb plus ing, throbbing or increasing in size. In a plaster back slab, there is a layer of what closest to the skin? Closest to the skin, guys. What do we think the answer to that one is? For number 19, keep the answers coming in, guys. Doing great so far. You're all doing really well with this. Number 19, stockinette, Anu has said. A stockinette, crepe bandage, says Janice. Okay, keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Okay. Nice work, guys. Keep them coming. For a stockinette close to the skin, etc. Let's see. Keep them coming, guys. Keep the answers coming. I'm just checking everything here. So everyone's answered. Faith has also said a stockinette. The answer to that one is... A stockinette, nice work. And also, if you had included cotton stockinette or non-compression stockinette, that would have been correct too. But cotton and non-compression weren't essential and weren't an essential answer. However, stockinette was. Pay attention to spelling as well. Very important. Okay, last one, number twenty. Patients aged mm, and over shouldn't be given the higher dosages of pain relief. Okay. What do we think the answer number 21, what number 20 is, guys? Let's see. The last one, patients, patients age. We were looking for a number, more than likely a year we were looking for, a kind of year we were looking for. So Chita has said 70 years. Nice has said 70 years as well. Okay, okay. 
Janice has said 20, uh, 70 years. Suja has said 70 years too. Okay, okay. The answer to that one was 70 years. Here you could write the number 70, the word 70. And um, if you included years or YRS, that's fine. So either you had the number or the number plus the years, that would have been your correct answer. Okay, okay. So I did notice a good number of people had gotten, um, had written down a crepe bandage for number 19. So there's a layer of something closest to the skin. I'm just going to analyze that one with everyone here really quickly, guys. So as we'll see here, uh, a layer of something. So immerse the layered plaster. I'm going to try and find what the answer is here. So yes, measure a length of, <clears throat> measure a length of plaster of Paris and the padding stock and net at each end fold roll in about 10 layers to the same length. So some people have said crepe bandage here. Yes, the keyword plaster back slab is here, but the context is actually better, uh, better identified here in part three and actually even in part one is where measure a length of non-compression cotton stock and net from halfway up the middle finger to just below the elbow. And that's why we take that and put that into the answer option. That's why that was correct. It's closest to the skin. Okay, well done to those who got that one correct. So were any of your initial correction uh, predictions correct? I think they were. Also, let me know how you got on in that activity too, guys. Did you uh, get all the answers correct? Did you get uh, five out of six? Did you get four out of six? Let me know in the comments how you guys got on, but you seem to all do really, really well with that activity, you did a great job of predicting, you did a great job of your skimming, your scanning, and using your reading skills as well. Yep, there we go, awesome. Everyone here has been doing awesome. I'm seeing some great results coming in here with your answers. There were either a really high mark. Yep, we're getting most of them correct. Maybe one person got one or two incorrect, but that's still a great score. And if you can do that in a mock exam situation, then you know that you're gonna be doing Awesome in the official OET exam. Nice work, guys. And yep, you're all saying as well that your prediction skills were coming in useful. I'm going to put my face back on the screen again. Haven't been here in a while. But yeah, nice work, guys. You all did absolutely amazing in that activity. Okay, guys. Well, well done for all of that. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this class today and you've had a really, really good time with practicing some of your prediction skills, your skimming and scanning skills, etc for this activity so well done with that i'm just going to finish off today's session now by going through a brief review of everything that we did in today's class okay so the review says everyone remember learn the format of the exam that's why we did the quiz today the quiz of course was learn the format what the questions are how many topics there are how many texts you have to do and the type of activities you have to do Remember, start off reading part A by taking notes of headings and subheadings to help you narrow down the correct text and to help you read and to save time. As you can see, you all did that very well today in this class, and undoubtedly it did help you save time, it would help you save time in the real exam, and it helps you just analyze the answer correctly and save you time in terms of your reading, help you find the text and, and uh, narrow in your focus or focus in on the answer options. Of course, when it comes to the gap fill exercises, as a short answer exercises, predict logical answers for gap fill or short answer questions from context and with your grammatical knowledge. So you're able then to home in on the kind of wording that's being used in the text itself and then extract that. Remember, the word that you will find in the text will be the exact same as the answer options. You don't have to paraphrase or change the form of the word at all. Highlighting keywords can be very, very important as well. So when you're reading the question options, Take a note of those keywords with a highlighter pen or underline them so it can help you really focus in on what the answer option may be from the text. And of course, guys, practice makes perfect. The more practice you do, the quicker you will get, the better you will get at doing your reading part A exercise. So that's my key takeaway from today's lesson. Okay. So guys, um, what did, first of all, did you enjoy this lesson today? Let me know how the lesson went today. If you did enjoy it, give us a like, give us a love, give say something that you enjoyed the lesson today. 
Let me know what you did well today, what you would like to improve on, and if you have any more questions very quickly before we finish this session today. But hopefully you enjoyed this session um, on reading part A, heading matching and grammatical prediction skills. You all did awesome at that. But yeah, throw in your questions and your comments very quickly before we finish. And I hope that you enjoyed it very, very well. Okay. You're very welcome, guys. Uh, thank you for coming today. I hope you enjoyed that class. Um, you did really, really well, of course, with the activities and really well, and you all seem to enjoy it very much today as well. But quickly throw in your questions. Of course, guys, I'm just gonna bring up my screen in a minute. That is, um, if anyone has any questions I can't answer today, you can see my email address there at support at swooshenglish.com. You can send me an email if you have any questions or queries about today's class about reading part A or how, about how we at Switch English can help you pass your OET exam the first time that you take it. Yeah, you're very welcome, guys. I appreciate that, Nonzo. I appreciate that, Jessa. I appreciate all of that, guys, all your queries and all your questions and all your lovely things that you're saying. Anyway, keep the questions coming, guys. Before we finish, I want to say that the next OET class from Switch English will be a mock speaking practice class with me. That will be Friday, 23rd of April at 9 a.m. UK time. Make sure you come along to that class for a chance to do some mock speaking on that day with me. I know many of you really, really enjoy that class. So come along and take part in that next Friday. And then the following week, we're going to have another listening session. Another reading class will be following along soon too. We'll be looking at reading part B at some point very soon. So make sure you come along every 9 a.m. every Friday. Um, UK time, and you'll come along to a Swish English class here on official OET. As a reminder, guys, if you're looking for some more practice for your OET with Swish English, we're currently running our free OET master classes. They're designed just for those who are still thinking about, hmm, how can I prepare for my OET exam the right way? We at Swish, of course, have designed these four video series with myself, and they'll go through the tips, tricks, methods, strategies, and mindset you need to pass your OET exam the first time. You will also get access to a free OET writing guide as well. So if you're interested, you will see the link there in the chat box. It says, join us for our free OET masterclass. Click on that link, input your details, input your email address, and you'll get signed up for those free resources as soon as possible. Please make sure you come along to those because they're very, very helpful, and very, very useful for your OET preparation. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to teach this class today. I hope that you find it useful. Uh, well done to everyone for doing so amazing in the reading part A activity today. You did great with the skills that we practice and with the mock practice that we did as well. So I want to wish everyone the best of luck with their OET exam and they're doing it very, very soon. I hope to see more of you in these official live classes that we're doing here at OET. Remember, every Friday, 9 a.m., I will be taking one of these official classes. Get signed up to the masterclass here with us at Swoosh English and make sure you are preparing adequately for your OET exam. So thanks a lot once again for coming, everyone. Glad you had a great day. I'll see you all very soon. Good luck with your preparation. Take care, everyone. Thanks to you again.